Ever since we started rearranging the surface of the earth, there has been a need to push piles of dirt and rock and especially to push it into holes or even the edge of a bank. It could certainly be done with hand tools, but only with great effort and much time. The difficulty arose with how to do it mechanically. On Thanksgiving Day, 1904, grain harvester manufacturer Benjamin Holt tested a new earth-moving machine on a farm near Stockton, Calif. By the time he finished his experiment, more than just the earth moved. The invention of the diesel-powered traction machines that could move over land too soft to support horse-drawn or wheeled tractors caused a revolution not only in the farming business but in the construction and military businesses as well. Holt's track drive principle was applied later to everything from bulldozers to the World War I military tank. In celebration of the 75th anniversary of that tractor, the Smithsonian Institution's Museum of History and Technology put on display last week a 1929 Caterpillar tractor called the Cat-10. It was a merger of the Holt Manufacturing Co., and the best tractor co in 1925 that created the Caterpillar Tractor Co., which today is the largest crawler tractor manufacturing firm in the country. Horses were great at pulling machinery and did reasonably well with pull graders to spread material behind them as they walked, but how to use horses to spread material ahead of them? Some say the first bulldozer was invented in 1904 by Benjamin Holt, who developed an endless chain tread for his steam engine. Around the same time, the Hornsby Company of England also patented their version of a bulldozer, which was closer to what's known today as a bulldozer because it was steered by controlling power to each track. Hornsby sold his patents to Holt around 1914 even though some people refer to these inventions as bulldozers, they were actually crawlers and not technically bulldozers. Most people, however, give credit for the bulldozer invention to Kansas farmer James Cummings and draftsman J. Earl McLeod, who created a scraper blade in 1923. Their patent, approved in 1925, was for a scrapper blade mounted forwardly of the tractor on a pair of pivoting arms which are linked to the sides of the tractor, example bulldozers. By the 1920s, tracked vehicles became common, particularly the Caterpillar 60. Rubber-tired vehicles came into use in the 1940s. To dig canals, raise earth dams, and do other earth-moving jobs, these tractors were equipped with a large, thick metal plate in front. The blade got its curved shape later. In some early models, the drivers sat on top in the open without a cabin. There are three main types of bulldozer blades. A U-blade for pushing and carrying dirt relatively long distances, a straight blade for knocking down and spreading piles of dirt, and a brush rake for removing brush and roots. These attachments, home-built or built by small equipment manufacturers of attachments for wheeled and crawler tractors and trucks, appeared by 1929. Widespread acceptance of the bull grader does not seem to appear before the mid-1930s. The addition of powered downforce provided by hydraulic cylinders instead of just the weight of the blade made them the preferred excavation machine for large and contractors alike by the 1940s, by which the time the term bulldozer referred to the entire machine and not just the attachment. Over the years, bulldozers got bigger and more powerful in response to the demand for equipment suited for ever larger earthworks. Like Caterpillar, Komatsu, Case, JCB, Euclid, A-list Chalmers, Liber, Liu Gong, Terex, Fia Alice, John Deere, BEML, XGMA, and International. Harvester manufactured 
large track type earth moving machines, RG Letourneau and Caterpillar manufactured large rubber tired bulldozers. Bulldozers grew more sophisticated as time passed. Improvements include drivetrains analogous to an automatic transmission instead of a manual transmission such as the early Euclid C6 and TC12 or Model C, Tornadozer blade movement controlled by hydraulic cylinders or electric motors instead of early models cable winch, brake, and automatic grade control. Hydraulic cylinders enable the application of downforce, more precise manipulation of the blade, and automated controls. A more recent innovation is the outfitting of bulldozers with GPS technology such as manufactured by Topcon Positioning Systems, Incorporated, Trimble Incorporated, or Leica Geosystems for precise grade control and potentially stakeless construction. As a response to the many and often varying claims about these systems, the Kellogg Report published in 2010 a detailed comparison of all the manufacturer's systems, evaluating more than 200 features for dozers alone. The best known maker of bulldozers is probably Caterpillar in the US, which earned its reputation by making tough, durable, and reliable machines. Komatsu, JCB, and John Deere are present day competitors. Although these machines began as modified farm tractors, they became the mainstay for big civil construction projects and found their way into use by military construction units worldwide. The best-known model, the Caterpillar D9, was also used to clear mines and demolish enemy structures. These appeared as early as 1929 but were known as bull grader blades and the term bulldozer blade did not appear to come into widespread use until the mid-1930s. Bulldozer now refers to the whole machine and not just the attachment. In contemporary usage, bulldozer is often shortened to dozer. Laplante Chouat took its name from E.W. Laplante, who started the company in 1889 by moving houses and pulling tree stumps, and nephew Roy Chouat joined him in 1911. The company evolved into the business of manufacturing bulldozer and snowplow blades and other equipment and was sold in 1952 to Alice Chalmers. Eventually, it was the Caterpillar Tractor Company that came to dominate the bulldozer market. The company was formed in August 1925 by the merger of Holtz Company and its major competitor, the CL Best Gas Tractor Company. The Caterpillar name is attributed to a photographer hired by Holt to take pictures of one of his crawler tractors. The photographer noticed that the rotors looked like a Caterpillar when he saw the image upside down through his camera lens, Holt liked it, and the name stuck. The history of the word bulldozer goes back to the 19th century when a bulldozer denoted a horizontal forging press used for shaping and bending metal. Another term, a bulldoze, was a large dose, literally effective for a bull of any sort of medicine or punishment. Bulldozing also meant coercion or intimidation. In the late 19th century, bulldozing meant using brute force to push over or through an obstacle, referring to two bulls butting heads in a fight. Today's term might be a bully. During World War I, Cold crawler tractors were used extensively by both American and British forces as beasts of burden, hauling heavy artillery and other heavy loads around the front lines where no other vehicles could handle the muddy conditions. Plant noted, it was also during World War I that the first tracked armored tanks were developed and were first used in combat by the British Army in September 1916. In the late 1930s, the tracked vehicles became more common and they became the go-to machine in the construction industry working on large projects like the building of Hoover Dam and the Golden Gate Bridge. 
By the 1940s, the term bulldozer referred to the entire machine and not just the attachment. Fleets of bulldozers were used in World War II to construct highways, runways, and fortifications. Military bulldozers rumbled through bombed-out villages across Europe, working to clear roads and keep supply lines open and rolled into camps as they were liberated by Allied forces. They were the first to go ashore on amphibious assaults, including the Normandy landings in 1944. Navy Admiral William Halsey said there were four things that helped win the war in the Pacific, airplanes, tanks, submarines, and bulldozers. Following the war, the bulldozer cleared the rubble of bombed cities, built roads, and leveled farmland in Europe. When President Eisenhower enacted the 1956 Federal Aid Highway Act, it meant the construction of the U.S. interstate system and the bulldozer was center stage. The 1950s was an era of rapid growth and construction in the United States, but those years were equally significant for large-scale destruction in the name of progress, according to Francesca Rossello Amon in her 2016 book, Bulldozer. In order to clear space for new suburban tract housing, an ambitious system of interstate highways and extensive urban renewal development, wrecking companies demolished buildings, while earth-moving contractors levered land at an unprecedented pace and scale. Its year of invention and the name of the inventor are lost to history, but in the mid to late 1800s, a device was developed to solve this problem. Details vary, but the general design consisted of a long beam with a perpendicular vertical blade at one end and an axle and teamster seat at the other. With horses attached to both sides of the beam, it provided a handy by means of using the original form of horsepower to push material in advance of the team. The earliest examples known to this author were built circa 1880 and these primitive bulldozers were produced as late as the early 1920s. As crawler tractors were introduced into agriculture and logging in the late 1910s, it was only natural that these eminently practical machines should be adapted for construction. Not only were they far superior to stock for pulling wagons and scrapers, over time their potential use with bulldozers emerged as well. Benjamin Holt reportedly tested a blade on the front of a steam tractor as early as 1902 and experimented with a blade on a crawler tractor in 1916. The first successful use of a dozer blade on a crawler tractor is believed to have been an invention by Laplante Choat Manufacturing Company in 1920 for use at the city of South Milwaukee garbage dump. The blade could not be lifted or lowered like the blade on the stock powered dozers, it simply flipped up and dragged on the ground when backing up. As the idea of a tractor mounted blade evolved, so too did variations on the design. An adjustable angle dozer was developed for situations in which spoil had to be moved to the side. Indeed, several manufacturers called angle dozers trail builders because of their suitability for cutting roads and trails along cross slopes. Other dozers were designed for specific applications such as land clearing, push loading, scrapers, mine reclamation, and gathering and pushing large volumes of bulk material. As hydraulics improved, multi-positional six-way dozers that could be angled or tilted came into widespread use. All right, that was the fascinating history of bulldozers, and I hope you liked it. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next video.